Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now recently I found this cooker for free on our local eBay called Marktplatz and it wasn't uh, functioning. There's a knob that you need to push in order to get boiling water and that knob doesn't work anymore. So in this video I'm going to attempt to repair it. So let's proceed with the unboxing. As you can see a nice cooker labeled cloth is used to protect the tap during shipment. Let's take it out of the box, like so. Now my lab is kind of messy because I'm in the process of moving. Well, not in the process, but I'm in the process of packing my stuff to move. So things are a little bit cluttered here and there. Yeah, so this is how the cooker looks like. It's a cooker fusion. It has boiling water, hot water and cold water. And yeah. It doesn't work. This knob doesn't make uh, electrical contact. And that's probably because somebody cleaned this, this part, and then water got in between the electronics and damaged the cooker inside. Now I'm going to attempt to take it apart. I've only seen a couple of videos where this section is taken apart and not the knob, not the actual knob section. So this will be a journey for ourselves and we'll see how far we can get this thing apart. Now you start with undoing this rod actually and I guess that's done by undoing that nut that's over there. Now I brought a few tools. I'm hesitant about using this because this will damage the threads and I don't want that. But in case we really don't get it out of there Oh yeah, there you go. This is much better. Now I think that there's some corrosion inside of the threads of this rod as well. Which caused this rod to basically be stuck to the tap. Oh, that's not that deep actually. You see it's blue and I guess that this is made of copper. Now this should now come off, which it does. But there are, oh there you go. And now we should actually be able to pull this lower section off. It is moving. There you go. Yeah, this step has been cleaned properly, I guess. Because there's a lot of caulk inside of here and a reaction with water and all that stuff. So. Not sure what they did, but they did something in order to try and repair it, I guess. Now, continuing, there will be two yeah, screws, kind of like screws. These things, they require a hex tool. Not sure what size. This is, I don't need this side, I only need this side. Yeah, so it's a four size 4 hex and we should now be able to crack this open oh it's actually kind of like a nut I haven't seen those before and one on this side as well be careful with, with the uh, wiring you don't want to damage the wiring Remove this one too, set it apart, and now presumably be taken apart. Oh, so the whole, so I think we need to remove this, and then we can slide the whole tap out of there. So let's grab some clothing, because I don't want to damage this. So I guess we'll, we'll st we are still going to use this one at its finest setting. There you go. It's not really bugging. It's actually kind of slipping. So I needed to put the device on the thing directly. And now it did rotate, but it doesn't anymore. So I need to put it on again. 
Now of course you will damage this part of the tap if you do it like this but for me this was the only way to get it off actually since it's corroded all the way and the damage is actually pretty okay it's not that bad as I thought it was going to so now we should be able to get this off I guess I think that this needs to come out as well so we can bend that a little bit outwards and then we can there we go, remove everything and we're left with the well actually with the tap assembly this is the regular tap for regular tap water and this is the boiling part now I'm guessing you'll need to remove the inside that little plate over there and then you can proceed with the removal of this thing and the knob the, the middle piece with the holes inside of this thing this thing this crown actually needs to come off yeah I think I need to undo the, the inner ring next to the uh, boiling water line and I've got no idea how I'm going to do that so I found a video of a guy online who also tried to replace and repair his cooker and he said that in order to get this ring off you'll need to get this piece off of the cooker and that's held in place by just a few o-rings so if you pull hard it should come out and it has already moved there you go well, that actually worked. I wasn't expecting that to work. Yeah, there you go. It's time to go. Is that it? Or did I break the whole freaking thing now? I'm not sure. It's interesting. I was hoping that the assembly could be taken apart actually. No pulling doesn't make sense, doesn't do anything. Can I remove the inside of this thing? Okay, now undo it, this pipe, like so. There you go. So now, there you go, that's better. That's better. Cool. So I've got some space now to work on this, uh, on this ring. There's a uh, grounding uh, strap over there, I need to undo that. And then I can feed the wiring a little bit more. Properly, whoop, properly clean it. I mean, I suppose it needs four wires, but I really can't see an entrance point for the wire. And I guess that this device is using some kind of magnetic ring or something. And that the sensors inside of the ring detects whether the magnet is close and if it is it will start to uh, pour out hot water let's see how it's seated over here sorry for the camera angle because it's, it's really messy for me as well oh this is the spring for the uh, pushback of the button but I do know that I want to see if this thing now works so presumably this is some kind of magnet or something, magnet, magnetic detector. I think that they're not using that fourth wire. So I found a pinout of the connector. And I'm going to, there's one pin that's left unconnected. And I'll be testing 
if that's the red pin. This one is left unconnected, this segment. Yep. So this is meant to be disconnected. That's cool. Now, whenever it is pressed, a series of resistors, resistor values are available. And if we press the button, we should see a resistor value change, which we don't. That changes the resistance, so you can't see it. So this is the the normal resistance, seven kilo ohms, and whenever you press it, it goes back to 1.7 kilo ohms. And then, I suppose when you rotate it, it also changes, but I can't really verify that because, you know, it's not really rotating. And there's also a way for us to test the LEDs inside of this thing. The LEDs require 12 volts or more. With my lab bench power supply at 12 volts. As said, the ground is the most innermost uh, part, closest to the body of the lead, and the positive pin is the second one. So now we should have a LED, but we don't, and we also don't have any current flow. So the LED doesn't seem to work properly. There you go. I'm thinking it might be the case because of the corrosion that's on the LEDs, but I'm not sure actually, so... Alright, I've got an idea. I think it's a better way to bypass these two LEDs. Oh, shit. I guess it's on. So let's power the LED ring and see what happens. Now again, ground is the inner pin and the power is the second pin. Now everything is uh, connected up. Let's do a second test. So it's drawing no power. I think I'll just contact, contact Cooker and hopefully we can get a new uh, ring. Because I don't think that this is going to work anytime soon. So I'll keep you guys posted. Oh hey hello, uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well if you want you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.